Well, I want to say first off, thanks to Kevin for this opportunity to share my original music with his audience. Um, this is such a pleasure, and as a songwriter, um, being able to share your stories and your song in, in the rawest form is, is really an, a beautiful opportunity. Um, I will mention before I play any of these songs, I have a great team of co-writers um, on my album and in these songs. Um, so we've got my producer, John Angus McDonald, as well as Stu Weinberg, uh, Colin McDonald, and Chris Kirby. So um, I'll touch on some stories from making my album Monarch um, with those guys as I play the acoustic and piano uh, stripped down versions of these songs. So this first one is, uh, I, I like to say it's very Canadian um, because it's called Why Should I Be Sorry and it's, it's about those times when you apologize uh, when maybe you shouldn't and on a more serious note um, in relationships when we end up being the person apologizing or being made to feel like we should be apologizing and um, I was that person and I remember sitting at my family's music store starting this song um, in my lesson room after teaching one night and I actually originally wrote it on piano but um, moved it over to guitar and then uh, yeah I had a, a great group of writers on this song so this song is called Why Should I Be Sorry and it's track number 10 off my album. Thank you so much, everyone, um, for tuning in uh, to this um, YouTube video. Because it's, you know, 
it means so much to artists to feel heard. And I know, um, you know, to have my story shared with all of you is really special. So thank you so much. Um, this next song, uh, I wrote at a time, I started writing, a lot of these songs started with me and then I brought them to the writing team. And this song I, I started writing, I was sitting in my dad's office with a big glass of wine and, you know, kind of realizing I, I wasn't fully myself at that time. And I was learning more and more that um, I needed to make some choices that were gonna serve my heart. Um, so from there, I took the song to the guys and, and they were really, um, positive and encouraging and, and gentle with this song. This one's a, a very vulnerable song. And I remember I was sitting on a Zoom call, uh, writing with Colin and Chris Kirby and John Angus, and uh, we were coming through the bridge and the lyric was, um, Lake, Lake Simcoe, Music Row. So Lake Simcoe in Georgina and Music Row in Nashville. And at the time I was really debating on uh, moving to Nashville, which um, obviously I didn't do. <laughs> But I, I remember telling the guys, you know, Lake Simcoe, music grow. And I looked at them and I, I was like, same shit, different show. And the guys were like, yeah, that's the lyric. And I looked at them. I was like, I can't sing that. And they were, <laughs> they were like, what do you mean? And I said, I can't say shit in a song. And, um, you know, the, the guys were perplexed but respectful. And, and, uh, and then I said, you know what? Like let me call my dad. <laughs> so I call my dad and I said, Dad, I, I, I wrote this lyric with the guys and I, I don't know if it's appropriate. And my dad's like, well, what's the lyric? And I said, well, you know, Lake Simcoe, Music Row, same shit, different show. And he was like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. So we kept that. We kept that in the record. Which I'm so glad because now my big girl pants are on and I say shit and fuck and ass and whatever I want, whatever I feel. And I think that's really the beauty of songwriting and the liberty of growing up expressing yourself through music is that you can take those liberties and say, it was fucking hard, you know? This pandemic was fucking hard. And sometimes the swear word is the very appropriate word to use. There is no hiding or disguising or relanguaging what you're about to say just to be appropriate. This song's called All the Way to Nashville. I said I don't feel like myself You said yeah I can tell I thought Music City was calling me Maybe it was just The Tennessee whiskey I keep getting high keep falling down Now it seems the news is getting loud All the way Don't get me wrong I've been trying to make it out of this town For so long All I seem to do here is waste my time Searching for a message In a bottle of wine Oh, hey. 
maybe I don't want to go all the way to Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lake Simco, music road. Yeah, that song still hits me every time, you know, and that's a beautiful thing about singing songs that really mean something to you as an artist is it doesn't even have to main, mean the same thing. That song started, I think, in 2019 and the writing team came in in 2020 during the pandemic. So, you know, really that song now means so much more now that I see how my life is panning out, which is really interesting. And I'm just gonna lose my guitar for a second here because this next song I'm gonna play on piano. And this song, you know, the story of, of these songs, for me, so, not every artist talks like, you know, that every song is their self-realization, but for me, I know, you know, I, I learn a lot about what I'm thinking and truly feeling when I write a song. And um, that song told me, no, you got to stay in Georgina a little longer. You have to discover yourself. You need to grow some roots. You got to get your head on straight. That was the realization with All the Way to Nashville. And when I wrote this next song, when I started writing this song, it was saying, Bernadette, you need to see yourself in your community. You need the reflection of who you are sung back to you still. You're not ready to leave that. And the interesting thing was, um, you know, that realization happened in 2019 and in 2021 I moved to Hamilton. And now I see the value in having those roots. I see the value in, I go back to Georgina now and everyone's like, Bernadette, I run into people in the grocery store, it's so beautiful, my heart fills. And now I live in a new city and I don't know anyone and I can't just say hi to people at the grocery store. I hugged a stranger the other day, like <laughs> that is where I'm at in Hamilton. So this song, Georgina, really celebrates community. And it does speak to my story. Like, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. Um, but when I was telling the guys on Zoom about how Georgina made my album happen, the crowdfunding and all the support Georgina gave me in order to make literally what I would call a pandemic miracle, the album of my dreams, working with an incredible group of musicians and writers to express ideas that were I was holding in my heart. And I just... I'm so thankful that Georgina helped bring this to fruition because without that support, without that crowdfunding, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So um, when I was telling the guys about this, Colin, um, we were writing the chorus and he rewrote the whole chorus. He goes, Georgina needs to know this song is about them. And he sings Georgina at the top of his lungs on Zoom. And it was totally different than what we had started recording. And at the time, John Angus was upstairs you know, recording the bed tracks with the band, and I was downstairs in the studio in the basement on Zoom writing with Colin and Chris Kirby, and I said, Colin, we already recorded the chorus to the song, you know, what are, and I said, we can't just rewrite everything, and he goes, don't worry, John Angus will figure it out, 
And for those of you who don't know, John Angus and Colin are brothers, and I can relate with my three brothers um, playing music with them. I, I find it quite funny because I would say something like that about, oh, don't worry, my brother John will figure it out. <laughs> anyway, so this song uh, celebrates my community, my roots uh, that continue to give me wings. This song's called Georgina. I'm a sister, I'm a daughter I'm a lady of the lake I learned to drive on a dirt road And I got all it takes So Georgina holds a special place in my heart, for sure. And um, I just I have to say that uh, I was telling someone the other day how, you know, even during the pandemic, even at a time where we were locked down in our houses and we couldn't go see our friends, even during the pandemic, I did not feel alone because I would go to the grocery store and someone would be like, Bernadette how are your feelings? And I'd be like, good, how are yours? We had those check-ins. Um, 
And I actually, if anything, felt more isolated moving to a new city where I didn't really know anyone. Um, and I go to the grocery store and, and, and I don't know anyone. I have to like introduce myself to the cashiers and build relationships with people. And it's, um, it's interesting because I was, I was talking to a girl the other day and um, I had said to her, like, yeah, you know, it's like, it t it's little interactions with people that build trust you don't realize. Like, Kevin Foster, like, I've known him since my childhood. You used to, you know, play hockey with my brothers, and I used to play hockey with your sister. Fun fact, I used to play hockey. Anyone need a goalie? Um, but I, you know, it's, it's, it's wild. So I have this deep connection with Kevin. Like, he, he stood up for me one time when we were in a bar, and I don't even know if you remember that, but it meant the world to have, you know, a, a fourth big brother, you know, kind of having my back. And that's community, that's Georgina, and those are the small relationships we build through our entire life that I think we take for granted. If we never leave them, we take them for granted. And so I hope my song Georgina and, and this video and this story reminds us to cherish those small town relationships. Too often we hear people complaining that, oh, everyone's in my business and blah, 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 and gossip this. But at the end of the day, I would way rather have that than feel isolated and alone in a city where I don't know anyone, you know? And I, and I have to use my outgoing, odd personality to, to make new friends. I carry dog treats in my pocket, you know? I've got like Dice the dog, you know, and, and Dice's owner, and Seamus's owner, and Dublin's owner. Like I have a lot of dog friends <laughs> in Hamilton. So, you know, and, and I know that those relationships will come, but it all takes time, and it all takes patience, and it all takes those small bids of trust that you can't, you can't orchestrate that. It just takes time and experiences that build relationships. So I'm so thankful for the ones that I have and how during the pandemic I didn't feel as alone as I have some days in Hamilton. And that's okay. I've learned what that means now. So this song, John Angus and I started writing this nine weeks into the pandemic. And it's one of those songs for me, it's like a mirror, right? Where I sing it and it sounds like I'm singing it for you, you know? It's like, you gotta. But really, we all know when we say you gotta, there's an I gotta in there, right? So this song's called Make It Through and I'm so glad, I'm so thankful in 2022, knock on wood, that it feels like we've made it through. Flying off the handle again Unchecked baggage in your hand You're not saying nothing new You're just stepping out your blues And I can't say that I you may be wrong, you may be right, but it ain't worth another fight. It's up too high, you just might fall on your sword and wonder why. Who is it standing in your way? Looking back at you, saying no. Oh, you say, yeah. These are hard times, it's true. But there's one thing you can do get out of your own way yeah. and make it through. Yeah, and make it through. Fall for anything and when you land You get your back up without a leg to stand Please remember that we used to know the earth was flat Careful with the things you don't understand Sometimes singing to the choir Sometimes you're fighting fire with fire 
top rope walking on a live wire It's getting old, you're getting tired Who is it standing in your way? Looking back at you, saying all the things you say These are hard times, it's true But there's one thing you can do Get out of your own every time uh, brings me back to that place of writing my first songwriting session on zoom how wild was that and um, I know that uh, if you listen to some of the Truces uh, stories about their new record um, uh, there's a song permission and enemy they're two songs John Angus mentions um, his older son and how he kind of contributes to the writing process with his you know child creativity and and you know visceral organic creative energy and it was funny because I've, I never imagined the rock star that I was working with would have his son like driving his car around him during a writing session on Zoom and I don't remember the exact lyric but I remember Elliot making a suggestion and we were like yeah buddy like that's awesome I, I'm not, I don't even remember how old he was but it was really sweet I'm gonna grab my guitar for this last song so before I play this last song, I just need to say another big thank you to Kevin for having me. Um, this is a big reminder for me to cherish those longtime friendships, those childhood relationships that you never know where they're going to grow. Um, so thank you so much for having me. So this song is track number two off my album, Monarch, and this song's origin story is that um, Stu Weinberg is, an, is a saint and an incredible human and without his encouragement, positivity and creativity, I wouldn't have believed in myself enough to, to make this record. And I went over to Stu's for our first writing session and and the the origin of this song was developed, the chord progression and the melody and the 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 message of breaking free from that dark narcissistic relationship and it doesn't have to be a boyfriend it can be a friendship it can be any relationship in your life and um, realizing that you have the power and I remember wanting to write and release this song because I wanted other people other human beings to feel that they don't deserve to be treated the way they're allowing and um, it's I'm not trying to victim shame by saying that I know you we, we get taken by the spell 
um, and it's, it's magnetic and it's electric and it's confusing. But somehow, after talking with a narcissist or a person who's kind of got their hold on us, we always go, how did we end up here? So this song was really kind of inspired by those relationships. And again, John Angus and Colin and Chris Kirby put their beautiful touches on this song, so, as well as my incredible bandmates. So you'll have to check out the record, Monarch and check out the album credits because uh, there's a lot of talent. This song is called Blame Me. Don't tell me about your problems, I can't fix them anyway. Don't ask me if you don't want to hear what I have to say. Point the finger and you wonder why it doesn't last. What's your motivation holding on to broken glass? Don't tell me. Yeah. If you're gonna blame me for bringing you down. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. 